Welcome back and happy birthday to Mr. Rafiq Mahama. A special aid to Mr. Ibrahim Mahama is the CEO of Engineers and Planners Company Limited. It's your birthday today, Rafiq. Happy birthday. And also to Honorable Ofosua Samoa, uh, Executive Chairman of the National Labor Commission. It's your wife's birthday today. And happy birthday to you, Mrs. Uh, Ofosua Samoa. If it's your birthday as well, happy birthday. And International Corpus Christi Day to all of us um, of the Catholic and Anglo-Catholic faith. Also, big fat 20th years or 20 years of uh, sweet love in marriage to Reverend Andy Ejekum in Tiamwa, who works here with us at TV3 as a cameraman. To, and to you and your wife, Mrs. Elizabeth Ejekum in Tiamwa of Ashoma Estate, it's your marriage anniversary. 20 years of solid love, and we can only wish you well and tap into your blessing as well. The Daily Graphic this morning reports that we are committed to peace but won't accept flawed elections. John Mahama, at the 28th anniversary of the NDC yesterday, uh, while they raised uh, the flags or hoisted flags, uh, he served early notice. 24 health workers test positive for COVID-19 in Infantsman. COVID-19 update. Cases uh, are 10,201, recovered 3,755, and 48 people have sadly left all of us to be on that silent harbor. Tertiary institutions get ready to reopen. Disinfection exercise begins. And we're also finding out on the front page of the Daily Guide that Varsity's disinfection underway. AG makes case against old register. We, Apostle, unmasked after kill, killer threats. Mahama hints election 2020 rejection. Danka Williams' son, Amok, with sex videos. And the Archbishop, His Grace, has asked that we pray with them and not find this uh, as a point to uh, run with clickbait. Our prayers are with him and the family in these difficult times. Freddie Blake calls for unity ahead of the primaries. And for Ghanaian Times, universities, Zoom Lion launched nationwide disinfection exercise in Accra. Ghana loses 100 million Ghana cities uh, port revenue, according to the minority. You remember the ICOMs and Unipass and all the Bruhaha there, the free forwarders raising red flags. Ghana's confirmed COVID 19 cases hit over 10,000 and 3,755 uh, recoveries, 48 deaths. Railway minister averts disaster at Abufu. Yeah, Chimota moves to safeguard a crab in Swam Railway from erosion. And uh, yesterday we're learning that the rail line uh, was dislocated, whatever it is that you would like to call it. My guest this morning is lawyer Abraham Amalba. He's the leader of the NDC's legal team. He's also a member of their communication team. Today they are in court. We do not have a rep from the side of the MPP. When we do, we shall let you know. But counsel, good morning. Welcome. Good morning, Johnny, but I need some explanation. The last time I was here, mm. the MPP rep was absent. Is it your station that tells them not to come because I'm coming? Or they have chosen to stay away when I'm coming? You are wearing Shatawale mask and you want to start causing trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, no. Is it the spirit that has entered you, or why? Well, Shatawale talks like the way I'm talking. No, but Shatawale is always <laughs> asking certain questions that puts people in certain corners. <laughs> we provide seats for all our, our you know, our friends uh -huh. and stakeholders to come. Uh -huh. So we don't know. We, we expect that the MPP will give us um, a rep this morning okay. to to uh, make the debate complete. Let's hope that in the course of the discussion. Yes, of working. course. I mean, it's early days here. It is just yeah. uh, 15 minutes past seven. So mm. let's, let's start off. Um, yesterday, I got um, a, a notice from a friend of mine in the UK mm. that says that they are being asked to foot their own bills if they want to return. Mm -hmm. And then if they, if they return, they will have to take care of their own uh, bills for the mandatory quarantine. Maybe I'll read a bit of the letter for you. It says... Um, the High Commission of the Republic of Ghana in London, and it says public notice, kindly refer to the High Commission's earlier communication on the above and note that per directives from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional, Re Regional Integration of Ghana, the evacuation exercise of Ghanaians who are willing to cover the cost of travel. That these, these are in bold, uh, bold uh, letters. And mandatory quarantine, also in bold letters, will take place on the 17th of June 2020 
in preparation for the intended evacuation and to ensure a smooth exercise. Interested applicants are to note the following. One, cost of airline ticket. The negotiated rate of fare with KLM London should be paid directly to the airline, which will only uh, contact only passengers who fulfill all the requirements set out in the points um, E and F. Passengers who are ready, already in possession of the KLM airfare return tickets will be allowed to get on this, to submit a copy of it to uh, KLM. Passengers are to carry the appropriate PPEs as face masks before boarding the flight and there will there will be temperature checks before boarding and all passengers are also to note that they will cover the cost of the mandatory 14-day quarantine with a possible extension to 21 days depending on individual cases. The cost of quarantine, as indicated below, per night must be paid directly to a selected hotel before the passengers are allowed to travel. So you must pay your own uh, transport fares and you must pay for, for it. Now, we start the accommodation from a two-star airport view hotel 500 Ghana cities a, a, a day to include boarding, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and water. Alisa Hotel is a four-star hotel, and 600 Ghana cities, you get the same treatment. Marriott Hotel is a four-star hotel, you get 600 Ghana cities for the same treatment. And this should be paid directly to the hotel, and uh, it says that uh, other details come along with the council. Key question that comes up is, is this. What is the responsibility of the state per our laws to its citizens that are stranded. It's a tale of stranded citizens who want to come home, but they say if you don't have money, you can't come home. And even if you manage to come home, you would have to take care of your own mandatory quarantine. Is this fair? Johnny, let me start by saying good morning to your viewers. Governments all over the world are supposed to cater for the welfare needs of its citizens. Mm. And that's why we vote parties into government. That's why we have a government. That the government, having paid taxes to, to rate, will now use the taxes and cater for our welfare needs. This group of persons we are talking about mm. are people who have been stranded following the closure of our borders. Mm. And the fact that uh, planes are no more flying in and out. These are people who are distressed. Mm. These are people who sent an SOS mm. to our government to be assisted. Mm. I am told that is it uh, some of them in Ka uh, uh, Qatar or Qatar, where? Uh, uh, Kuwait. Kuwait were what? sleeping rough. They, they had no, they had evicted them from wherever they were. Mm. And they were sleeping rough. The, the government said they had been put in a shelter. As far as we know, we spoke with one uh, uh, person from Kuwait, and they said they had been put in a shelter. So it they, tells you that they were sleeping rough. And that's how come they are now in a shelter. So if people are in that dire street, if people are in that situation, mm. for a government to now impose these... Uh, amounts of money on them before they can come back to their motherland. It's not only criminal, but wicked. Government cannot pay for everything. No. Government is able to pay for the salaries of 128 ministers, the highest in the world. They have been able to do that. See, when this COVID broke, Government went to the World Bank, mm -hmm. took some money. They went to the IMF, took some money. They took some money from our heritage fund. They established a COVID fund. For God's sake, where is all those money? But we can't use all those monies to pay airfares and mandatory quarantine, can we? People need to eat. People were getting free water, electricity. Uh, fuels have been bought into the COVID 19 cars, other things are coming in. PPEs are being provided. You can't spend all the monies on FS, can you? So you see why the minority call for accounting mm -hmm. for the COVID fund is key here. So that if that had been done, we will know how much had gone into what you are saying and how much is left mm -hmm. and whether that can do for bringing our brothers and sisters 
who are stranded outside. You see the wisdom now? So, you see, this morning, I don't want to be so hard on the government because you know my stand against them. But it doesn't make any sense to tell people who are stranded, who have run out of money, that before you bring them, this is what they should cover. Up. Then what is the need for having a government? And so I think that, Johnny, mm -hmm. once again, this government has failed the people of this country, particularly those who are stranded outside, they will begin to ask questions. Is it worth it being a Ghanaian this morning? And the obvious answer for them will be a big no. But the government is trying to organize for you a travel arrangements. It says, look, I'm putting the plan together, but you support me with funds. Is it too much to ask? Do you know that what happened to them is a disaster? It's like um, the June 4th disaster, twins, mm -hmm. twin disaster. It's mm -hmm. like, that is their disaster too. June 3 disaster. June 3. Mm -hmm. That's their disaster. Would you have asked those people to pay money before you treat them? Would you have, you, if you were president? Mm -hmm. And I know you'll be a better president than what we have. I'm, I'm now, <laughs> if you were president, would you have asked those people who were caught up in that disaster to pay money. That is their disaster too. And, in fact, look, in times like this, mm. it calls for sacrifice from leadership. What kind of sacrifice? In fact, you? let me tell you, in times like this, mm. the president should have foregone his salary, asked his ministers to forego their salary mm. and say that, Let's bring our compatriots back home. The president has done that. April, May, June, his salaries, three month salaries have been donated for the fight against COVID. He said it in a public announcement. So he's giving his I salaries. I even have a problem. And the, ministry, the ministers have given off 50% or so. Um, 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 I even have a problem with the way the president went about it. People were dying at the time you made a pledge. Mm. You see that your, 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 uh, 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 three month salaries mm. should be used to cater for them. What if those people don't, don't live up to the third month? Hmm. What if they don't live up to the third month? I think that the management of this COVID, we have seen mm. that it is so abysmal. Can you tell me the last time? Uh, they came out with this, their regular briefings. This week, nothing has happened. Right. Tuesday, today is Thursday. Mm. Nothing has happened. A simple means that the government is overwhelmed. You cannot and say they that. have given up the fight. You cannot say that just the, because the, 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 the process the, doesn't the, happen. The, the, the health minister <laughs> told us in one of the briefings that we should begin to live with it. So I think that, uh, let me tell the people there if they are listening, the government says that you should live with the COVID the way you are living. And if you have money to come home, come home. But there are better days ahead. Wait, 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 which there better are better days? days ahead. Which better days? And when the rescue is completed, mm. when this country is taken away from the hands of these people who don't love Ghana, your people are surrounded. Mm. You see, didn't, didn't the government organize some uh, memorial for the, uh, the guy who was killed? George, George Floyd. George Floyd. Mm. Why do you know him? It was in solidarity. I said, why do you know him? We had had a year of return. I said, why, why do you the know him? The diaspora had come in. Why do you know him? He had helped us raise money. You don't even know the man. You have solidarized with him. People who are your own people, you can solidarize with them and bring them back home. It tells you the mindset of the people who are ruling today, that Ghanaian lives do not matter. Could, 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 could the government, for example, have taken the mandatory, mandatory quarantine fees, for example? Because I know that in the early days, some uh, 1,000 persons were brought in. They, they were asked to stay at various hotels 
mandatorily and their bills were taken care of. Why, why can't the treatment be the same for, for these persons who are coming in from the UK, from the US, wherever it is that they're bringing them in? That's why I don't want to agree with you that there are no resources to deal with those people who are stranded. Because if the government had even said that, look, we are going to take some of the bill mm -hmm. and then uh, ensure that um, the rest, if you can, and, and, and I even thought that they would have first brought them home before asking them. Some are there as students. Mm. They went and they have finished their courses. They don't have grants. You're asking them to cough up before they come home. So the most plausible thing to do and reasonably, thing, reasonable, uh, reasonable, well, <laughs> what did I say? The most reasonable thing to do was mm. to ask that, well, we don't have enough funds, right. like you indicated, but we'll take up some of these bills. Mm. And then when you come back home, back home here, they have relatives mm. who can also help them to raise those funds. But to say they should cough up all these things, for me, it shows a government that is simply insensitive. Okay. Join us with your uh, messages and numbers are on your TV right now. And then you can also uh, join us with your thoughts and comments. You have questions as well. But yesterday at the 28th um, anniversary celebration of the founding of the NDC, the former president, John Mahama, reiterated that the National Democratic Congress commitment to peace before, during and after the 2020 elections was intact. However, I said the NDC would do or everything in its power to ensure that the country remained peaceful and the electoral processes proceeded smoothly. However, he cautioned that the party would not accept the results of a flawed election. As the leader of the NDC, there's a quote from him, I wish to serve notice that we shall do our part to ensure that our country remains peaceful and the electoral processes proceed smoothly. But, and a big but, let nobody assume that we will accept the results of a flawed election, he stressed. The former president uh, said this yesterday. Council, mm. how do you define a flawed election, especially when you are in court with the Electoral Commission over a matter that you disagree, the CI, the components and the requirements to acquire a new voter's card? The matter is yet to be ruled upon or judgment is yet to be given, even though the CI has been passed. And you come back and say you will not accept a flawed election. What's your definition of a flawed election? Let me start by saying that yesterday's flag raising ceremony to commemorate our 28th anniversary mm. was a successful one. Uh, don't forget that under this fourth Republican dispensation, mm. the NDC is the most successful political party, having won four out of seven elections. Mm. And the records are there to show that when it comes to developing this country uh, infrastructure-wise, the NDC is streets ahead. Now, on that occasion, mm -hmm. it was just proper for the leader of the party to also wade into issues relating to our elections. Mm -hmm. We are six months to elections. Now, this should have been the time for you, me, mm -hmm to begin to evaluate the processes mm -hmm. and programs of the various political parties. This is the time, mm -hmm. six months. But we are being bogged down mm -hmm. with the compilation of a new register, six months to election. The Electoral Commission says it has the right to do so, and it will do what is best because it thinks that the register is bloated. It is not fit for purpose for the 2020 elections consultations have been done, and they will go ahead anyway. In so doing, I want to tell the Electoral Commission that they have no right to disenfranchise Ghanaians who are desirous mm. to be on the register. How are they doing that? In all over the world, mm. when such exercises are being carried out, the form of identity mm -hmm. is an identity that is common to about 90 or 95 percent of the citizens. Mm. Then the 5 percent or 10 percent who don't have that form of identification will now resort to uh, what they call the uh, 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 what is it? Guarantee. Guarantee mm. or endorsement. I don't know. A guarantee. But here in Ghana, it's the reverse. 
you have the EC telling the people of Ghana to rather use an elitist document, passport. Mm -hmm. Elitist document such as a passport as a form of uh, uh, identification. I ask the question, mm -hmm. how many Ghanaians have the passport? How many Ghanaians have the passport? Jim Mensah. And those who have it, by the name, by the name, uh, the mm -hmm. name of that document, passport, mm -hmm. these are people who want to pass the port and leave this country. They want to walk or fly past it. That's what it's called, passport. Mm -hmm. Do you know my mother, whenever I ask her to come to Accra, mm -hmm. she says she doesn't want to come. And when she comes, two, three days, she wants to go back. Why? You don't treat she her She doesn't way. just want the hustle and bustle of Accra life. It's so, so crowded. Mm. Can such a person be thinking of acquiring a passport to pass the port and go somewhere? If you take her on a vacation, she would, she would have to get one then. So that's why I'm saying that it is an elitist document. Mm. It is only the elites in our society who have the luxury to go on vacation. And I don't belong to one of them. And so you realize that the, the processes mm -hmm. leading up to the 7th December elections are skewed in such a way as to give one party an advantage. So, for instance, National Identification Authority card, or Ghana card, they say. We realize, and we've put this in the public domain, mm -hmm. the, that is why the NIA even came back, because they accepted those things. They said they were going to go and do mob-up. Uh, uh, something that John Boydou says will be res uh, resisted. Uh, forget about him. But he's a party secretary. Of yes, the, I'm, of not the ruling to, party. I'm not going to have... Uh, um, you are, uh, introducing his name, you are uh, affecting my train of thought. Look. <laughs> you look at the registration that took place mm. in our strongholds. Mm. They couldn't even register half of those who are currently in the register. Was in the, it, in the current register. Was it deliberate? If it were not deliberate, how come that in the Ashanti region and in the Eastern region, which are strongholds of the MPP, mm -hmm. they registered more than three times those who are in the register? So what the former president was saying is that, look, we are peaceful people. And I know you know that the former president is a peaceful person and cannot even hurt a fly. We are peaceful people. We are interested in the peace of this country, mm -hmm. but we will not accept a flawed election. I'm asking you to define for me what a flawed election oh, is. Oh, I have just told you that when you are skewing registration processes, mm -hmm. when you are using documents, mm -hmm. our strongholds are in the rural areas. Mm -hmm. And if you begin to exclude people from those areas mm -hmm. to have their names on the register, by asking them to provide uh, passports mm. and then asking them to provide Ghana card, mm. when you know very well that in those areas, the Ghana card was not available to them. They killed. Look, my baba, huh? mm -hmm. the one who cuts my hair, says that in Dabala, mm. behind Dabala, mm. there are some communities there. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying Dabala itself. For you to say I'm lying. Right. Behind Dabala. Mm. There are communities there. That it was only three people who got the Ghana card. Behind Dabala. Mm. Only three people. So tell me, would it be fair if three people register on voting day, you send a whole ballot box mm. and only three people in that village. They have a chance to, to guarant for people. I am they, saying they that of the community who I am saying that they are turning upside down okay. the process of registration. I have told you that. The exception is becoming the norm. The exception is becoming the norm. Normally, all over the world, you use a card that is common to everybody. Okay. Then, the guarantee will be like 5%, 10%. But here we are. We are going to rely, majority of Ghanaians are going to rely on the guarantee. That process itself. Are you not beating war drums?
what I'm saying, where, where is war? Have I asked anybody to go and bring uh, uh, cutlasses that, that, out? That you will not accept the, the results of the elections that are yet to be held. Ah. If you, you consider it's flawed. Ah. Would, who, 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 going to play a football match, hmm. would gleefully say that if we go and the referee chooses, we'll be glad and raise our hand and be jubilated and come home. The warnings that we are sending... Hmm is to call for a free and fair elections. And you don't see that happening? The, the processes leading up to the registration itself is fraught with some challenges. And that's why we are in court. Okay. We will go back to you. Let's uh, welcome Mr. George. You see, he's the National Communications Director of the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO. Today he's looking very, very spectacular in a very uh, bespoke african shadow george welcome how are you doing I'm good. great we we, we start been it's been a while yeah. it's been a while we missed i'm you. sorry for being late too. it's okay we've been yeah. seeing you on your tv so yes, uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's okay it's a one family yeah. but we started the conversation earlier with um the the returnees um the covid stranded Ghanaians who are out there yeah. i don't know if you want to have a bite the fact that uh, government is asking them to cough up money to pay for their Airfares and also to foot the bill for their mandatory quarantine. And um, they say this is unfair to them that, okay, what is the essence of their taxes that they've been paying all this while to government? Then now that they are their lowest, government is asking them to bring all that money. Where are they getting the money from? I don't know if you want to take a bite on it and then we'll quickly do the EC. Uh, John yeah. Mohammed's comment yesterday that okay. we'll reject. Flawed election. Should I tie the two in one? Oh. Well, let's let's uh, finish the the oh. first one and then. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you. Good morning to uh, our viewers. Uh, good morning to Honourable Abraham Malba. Uh, you know, those who won uh, were stranded in the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, Sometimes you ask. Uh, Mostly, mm -hmm. I believe they went on their uh, private business trips and there's this situation, they've been uh, entangled in mm -hmm. the circumstance mm -hmm. and couldn't uh, come. Whatever be the situation, they are citizens of Ghana and, you know, they need to come back home and do their business. Uh, borders mm -hmm. and uh, places were closed, flights were stopped and all that. Now that we need to get them back. Mm. Uh, one, if government is saying they should cough up their costs for mm. the mm. Ev ev evacuation or whatever it mm. is, mm. Uh, one, government has brought its position. They, the people, have also said, look, we, we, we are at our lowest ebb. Mm. Uh, we are challenged. It wasn't our fault that we were caught up in this mm. situation. Mm. Um, I th would think the foreign ministry should engage them further uh, okay. if it's possible. Mm -hmm. and, and the cost is so high, government knows it cannot bear all. Mm -hmm. Why don't we meet halfway? Mm -hmm. You get it. Uh, the, they come up with something to meet halfway with government, so it will be a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are taxpayers. Uh, yes, the states uh, may have contingency mm -hmm. plan, mm -hmm. yes, and to support such people. Uh, but because of A, B, C, D, mm. and most of the uh, other things government is doing to support the Ghanaian people in the mm. COVID mm. situation. Mm. Uh, 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 Malva says you have too much money. You've yeah, gone to uh, IMF, I, World Bank, <laughs> you've taken from I, the Heritage Fund. Yeah, we are giving, and we are giving a lot of freebies. That's mm. what I'm going to okay. <laughs> rule out, you know, from April to uh, June, mm. April to June, Free water, uh, one you know, uh, fifty percent uh, uh, bonus to frontline health workers, mm -hmm. uh, re removal of taxes to all health workers, and all that. These are all monies that otherwise would have come to into the national coffers, right? Mm -hmm. And so we are doing this: uh, free water, fifty percent electricity, and all that. Uh, baseline consumers, mm -hmm. free electricity. These are all monies that will be paid by the government mm -hmm. into those various chests, right? And so government uh, must be careful, you know, 
what additional cost you are adding. Mm. But I would rather we, we meet the people mm. uh, halfway uh, instead of saying they bear uh, the full cost. Uh, halfway, well, we take care of mandatory quarantine like we did for the early thousands yes, yes, that came yes, in. Yes, yes, yes. Because they have been asked to pay yeah. for it and they oh, say it's oh. unfair. You know, that one, I would rather the state bears that. Okay. I would rather the Let, state Let's talk that. about John Mahama. Yesterday at the 28th uh, anniversary of the MDC, he says that they will not accept the result of a flawed election. Now, Maliba has explained uh, what they mean by flawed election, that the processes leading up to the elections, the demands being made by the Electoral Commission uh, for you to be able to acquire a voter's ID card in itself is problematic, which is why they are in court. <laughs> and they think it's unfair that the exception is becoming the rule. So if all of these things happen, they are serving early notice that they will reject it. How do you take that? Uh, it's it's uh, it's marks of uh, when we're growing up, and <clears throat> we used to play socks ball, right? Mm, right. And when we play in the socks ball, and then uh, the other party sees he's losing, uh, and he's the <laughs> owner of the ball. <laughs> what happens? He picks the ball, and then. But in this case, you are the owner of the ball. <laughs> you hold the ball. <laughs> You got it. And, and again, if the person feels he's losing, uh, he's a, he makes excuses uh, to, you know, get out of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, His Excellency, the former president, is just trying to seek alibi, uh, mm -hmm. to have a basis to say, look, this election is flawed, and so we are not going to accept the result, because he knows the telling record of this government mm -hmm. is so scary to them. And they know that the Ghanaian people appreciate the excellent work of this government, right? And so uh, would, not, would not in any way look in the way of uh, the rejected uh, John Mahama coming back to be re-elected uh, mm -hmm. as, as president of the Republic of Ghana, mm -hmm. looking at what his successor is doing. Mm -hmm. He couldn't even sustain uh, teachers and train, uh, nurses' allowance. Just that. His Excellency, the Vice President in opposition, has said that amount constitutes just about 0.02% of our GDP. How is that consequential to the issues they are raising about the regular? Let me, let me come in. I'm, mm. I'm giving you mm. one. It's because they're scared of all these, mm. okay? And they know it's tearing them in the face that they're losing the election. Mm. They're seeing it clear. You get it. Mm. Now, let me come to the matter of the electoral processes. Right. That they allege that is fraught mm. with problems. Mm. Yes, there may be challenges, okay? Are there challenges? There may be challenges. Are there challenges? Okay? But the processes that if you invite a key stakeholder mm -hmm. as electoral commission, mm -hmm. you invite the NDC to IPAC and they decide not to come. Mm -hmm. These are challenges mm -hmm. to the EC. Because when decisions are taken, that person who decided not to come will mm -hmm. then go stand outside and be making the loudest of noise. Mm -hmm. That you are <laughs> in cahoots with uh, another party to do something. Mm -hmm. You get so that is their own creation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's come to the processes. That he he cited the issue of people being registered, and I look at their uh, press conference. I watch what is excellent. Sorry, the national chairman. Uh, Chairman of Fusu Fusu Fusu. Uh, you know, anyway, it happens to be somebody I know of okay. my respect. Okay. When I was in sixth form, you know, he used to talk to us and advise us a lot. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's where they call him Brasa Mifu, too. <laughs> you, you, you get it. Mm. And so he said something mm. that I'm taking two hypothetical situations that he brought. Mm -hmm. That in the voter region, about 887,000 mm -hmm. uh, people, uh, 18 plus, have been registered, right? Mm -hmm. And then about 380,000 of those people have got their cards. Mm -hmm. About 500,000 plus are yet to get their cards. In the meantime, the NIA is not distributing the cards. Yet. He said they will do that on Monday. That's good. Wednesday, he said he will do that and it's still not done. That. But it's it's going to be done. It's going to be done. Mm -hmm. And then the second one uh, is Ashanti. I'm just taking the two hypothetical. Mm -hmm situation. The same record of the NDC saying about 18 plus, 3 million, 223,000 plus. Mm. And 1.6 million of those have cards. About 1.6 million haven't got it. Mm. And they make the allusions that in the voter region, 2,000 machines were used in the registration right. processes. And, and, and they in think Ashanti, it's unfair. Yeah, in Ashanti, 5,000 machines were right. used, right? And then uh, that is the situation. Look, 887,000 is about a fourth of 3.22. Mm -hmm. And so if they use 2,000 machines there, mm -hmm. they should have used 8,000 in the Ashanti region. If you want to be fair mm -hmm. to all parties.
Okay, because of the numbers. By the calculus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, <laughs> proportionally, that is how it should have been. But they use 5,000, which is less. Okay, and so it's even affecting us in government, mm. our stronghold. Okay. And another key one, our stronghold, the Eastern region, mm. is yet to get their work complete. Let, let me ask you a question. So the NDC is in court with the Electoral Commission. Thank you. Uh, now, that matter is yet to be solved. Yeah. But the Electoral Commission, upon the maturing of the CI and getting it passed into law, had already set a date ahead for 30th of June when the matter that is before court is yet to be settled. Do you think the Electoral Commission knows something that we all don't know? No, a uh, lawyer is here. I'm happy he's here, uh, John Hughes. If I understand the uh, reliefs the NDC is seeking, mm -hmm. uh, they are seeking that the voter ID mm -hmm. be used as one of the citizenship identification. Mm -hmm. That's the previous one. We are of the opinion that it is defective based mm -hmm. on the ruling Abu Ramadan that is the EC and another. Okay. You get it. And that uh, the EC and the political parties were instructed to expunge those who registered. Which the EC now says they didn't. Good. They, they said oh, they... Yes, they <laughs> said they, they didn't. I have held the opinion that what they did was symbolic. Mm. Okay, they didn't expunge all of them. But they didn't. Okay. They told and, the court that they did. And I, I, I said here on your show, mm. and I kept saying it, that I thought, he's a lawyer, an officer of the court, I mm. thought the Supreme Court erred in not asking an audit firm to do the audit mm. and allowing political parties and the EC stakeholders to go do the work. Okay, okay. now last this thing. No, the EC is to go on with its work, right? Mm. They are doing, once that does not happen, whether they say we should use the voter ID or mm. not, the registration will go on. Okay. Okay, let's, last one. Let's, let's go to Etanam. Okay, <laughs> we'll come back to, let's, let's know, go to something the, the former president himself said. Yes, yes. Uh, we'll, about we'll the come, Electoral Commission. We'll, I'm going to quote him. We'll, we'll come back. Etanam, Thank welcome. <laughs> Thank you. So, good morning uh, for Johnny. For the government to tell Ghanaians who are stranded outside to cough out huge money before coming back home is so insensitive. Kick out Nana, kick Nana out, Sasa from Tadi. John Leland Tevandapoy, I believe government is unable to incur the cost of the airfare of Ghanaians stuck abroad because of how adverse the COVID-19 pandemic has impacted the economy. Perhaps government is broke. I mean, did government not absorb the airfare of the Kuwait deportees? No, that government did not pay for that. Good morning, Johnny. It was the Johnny. Kuwaiti government that paid for it. Good morning, Johnny. Those Ghanaians who want to come back home, things are not going on well for them. So if government said they should take their own course, I think it's too harsh. The government should come again from terrorists in Kumasi. Can't they put them in any school buildings or some guest house, which costs 80 and 100 cities, <laughs> to spend their quarantine days oh, out there? This is wicked. Oh, Potassium yeah. inside also. Okay. Walanyo in Akwitiya says MPP went to court when they felt the 2012 elections was flawed. However, I don't see why every well-meaning Ghanaian, including Mr. Mahama, will wish doom for this country because an election didn't go in their favor. If he has something need to offer us as Ghanaians, he should channel those efforts into mobilizing everyone to get registered. Good morning, Johnny and Neto, now my crush. <laughs> Please, the president has done very well concerning those in abroad. Uh, it's best they stay there if they are low on funds to be uh, treated than to come add up to the numbers we already have and are struggling with Epaphras from Dansuman. Johnny, there's nothing wrong with the truth. Mr. Mahama said it. The MPP thinks they are the only people in this country. And if it's not them, it shouldn't be anyone. Yes, the result shouldn't be accepted. I, and if uh, the process is flawed at Nanaba. Matthias Bukhari writes from Tempani. Good morning, TV3 New Day. We don't uh, know what the NDC did yesterday. Uh, represented whether an adversary, bitter complaints, or a counter reaction to processes leading to elections 2020. Amaliba should stop the pettiness, mischief, and deception. Johnny, good morning to you and your panelists. JM and NDC should accept defeat in the upcoming 2020 elections because they have lost already, and to remind them they should prepare to defend their pink sheets in Supreme Court after 2020 elections from Mohammed Ibrahim Yindi. Brahma Adamu. I will rebe from Bupe. Good morning, Mr. Johnny and lawyer Abraham Amaliba. Inasmuch as the Jane Mensa-led Electoral Commission is in independent, it doesn't mean that they have unfettered powers. So the commission should build a consensus among various political parties so as the, uh, to ensure free, fair, and incident-free elections. Good morning, Johnny. Please, why is the MPP always afraid of lawyer Amaliba? Is it because he has always whipped them when it comes to debate on the floor, they claim they, they have the men. So where are they now? Davido 
from voter region. Good morning, Johnny. It's simple. The MPP government is only being insensitive to our brothers and sisters stranded abroad. Majority of these people are students. And where do the government expect them to get money uh, to fare uh, themselves back home? Let's kick Nana out. Mashud rise from Tichima. Let me take the last one. I agree with the former President Mahama because every indication is pointed to a direction where Electoral Commission is working in favor of MPP. My regards to Comrade Mutala Mohammed, next MP for Tamale Central, from Osman Bukusu in Tamale. That'll be it for messages. Thank you, Thank you very, very much, Edson. I'm grateful. Uh, Council, I, I'm asking this question uh, that I put to George earlier that um, the, the matter is in court. We're here to conclude, but the Electoral Commission has already set a date. Is there something they don't know that we don't know? What do you see? Looking into the crystal ball. That's a good question. Uh, somebody asked me that question yesterday, mm. but uh, I have faith in the Supreme Court. I don't think that the Supreme Court will be uh, leaking information to um, the, the, the electoral commissioner. Mm. I think that it is part of the recklessness of the EC boss. The oh. matter is in court. You don't know the outcome. Even if you knew the outcome, you should be a bit discreet. But this, a woman who thinks that she can do what she wants. And that is why I support the Dormahini when the Dormahini took her to the cleaners yesterday. He doesn't have the power to do that, does he? Doesn't have the power to do what? To do that. To I am stop just people from registering and all of that. I am, I am just also criticizing her. Mm. Do I have the power to do that? Yes, you have. So Dormahini has the power to criticize her for her conduct show of disrespect to the National House of Chiefs. See, in all these things that we are talking about, mm. Eminent people in society have indicated that the voter register should not be changed. The chief imam has spoken. It's going beyond the, the, what is the name? Kodio. Just mm. yesterday, Kodio mm. spoke about it. Mm. And so if you have the NDC in Kahoot, uh, MPP in Kahoot <laughs> with this uh, electoral commission okay. trying to change the register at this time, okay. and you are talking about there, there's defeat staring the face of in the face of the NDC. Glaring, mm. glaring. Look, let okay. me tell you. Okay, thank the you. The people of this country mm. are angry with Akufado for making this country a police state. Oh, a tyrant. It is not a police look, state. We're a, a tyrant, democratic state. A tyrant like Akufado who we're, we're, we're will like, not allow press freedom. Johnny, oh, who will not that's, allow. That's, who, who, that's, who, that's who, not who, fair. Who, that's who, not who, fair to no, the but, president. Johnny, look, People but, have been arrested you are, you are day calling, in, day out. You are calling the president names, which is The unfair. president is uh, presiding over a tyrannical state. That's what I'm saying. No, people uh, are not is, free like to speak. Lawyer, like if, people uh, believe they are pe seeking will people, affect the registration pe people, processes. That's pe pe what. People are not, are not, are not allowed to speak. Look at the way people are being arrested. Okay. Without due recourse arrested? to court. But you, to you, law. you can speak, but you must be mindful of your speech. Sure. Uh, well, so I, I have in mind on my a document here from the Ghana Police Hospital, and it's uh, dated uh, June 2020. To whom it may concern, there's a drug check, the dip drug test. Uh, name for Kwabuna Ousue J, the apostle who was arrested. The sample taken was for urine. The time of the collection was uh, 5.45, that's 7.45 p.m. Uh, tested by Superintendent Dr. Ajua Nuru Penning. He is 56 years, as I'm sure you know, he's male. Uh, he was, uh, it was done on the 9th of June. The time of testing was 7, uh, uh, 5.47. So it was taken at uh, 45 and tested at 47. The substance, as it is now, and all of it, Save two proved positive. Opiates, negative. Uh, tetrahydrocannabinol, positive. Tramadol, positive. Alcohol, negative. Benzodiapines, uh, negative. Cocaine, negative. Meta Metaphetamine, negative. And cotinine is also negative and signed by this. Now, somebody is asking... You are, you are the lawyer. I come was, to, I, I come is to there you. an independent person I, when these things were? I done? don't know, but I'm coming to you. I don't know what you make of the arrest by the national security officers parading the suspect and even congratulating him on video and saying, so far, I wish you we and all of that, even before due process had been done. Run us through what is, what is the right way Look, to go about these the, things. The Constitution provides that if you arrest a person, mm. you must tell that person the reason for the arrest in the language he understands. Okay. That wasn't that. That's one. Two, they claim they had a warrant right. for his arrest, mm. but did not give him the warrant to read, neither did they read the warrant to him. Mm. 
Mm. That's also against oh. the procedures. Right. Thirdly, it is wrong mm. to, to parade a suspect. Don't forget that he's a suspect. Mm. To parade, at the time, he was a suspect. Mm. To parade a suspect and humiliate him in that way. Because he's not been found guilty yet. He has not been convicted. Mm. And so if you defame him in that manner, mm. it will have a lasting effect on him, even if the, the court clears him. So it is also wrong to, as it were, treat him the way he's being treated, mock at him the way he's being mocked. You are reading a, 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 a hospital report. Right. The question to ask, because there are people who are saying that that wee substance was planted on him. Who was the independent witness there? You must have somebody who is related to the person mm. to be there to observe all these things. Who was there as an independent witness? And the search on him. At what point did they search him? And who was... Because you search somebody, mm. there must be an inventory okay. for uh, an independent person to sign that I was there when this... Because I have seen how they search my chairman's house. Mm. Or for some purpose, I was there. So you sign off and say, oh, these were the things, these were the things they picked out. Okay. Who was there? I am saying that it goes back to the intolerance. I'm saying that the way this administration is paranoid and thinking that people are out there to overthrow it and don't know that people are angry because of their stewardship. Mm. That is what is making them do these things. Okay. But I am saying that there's light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you. When jo John George, Mahama comes, George is seeing the all light. These he, things, he would, he all would. these things will come to an end. You think Ghanaians want to be suppressed like the way they are being George, suppressed? George, illuminate your light as well. He has done his... <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a minute to illuminate your light yeah, as well. Thank on, you. on this particular matter. Yes, mm. one, uh, it is not the traditional Ghana police that went to that effect matter. his uh, arrest. Right. 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 Uh, you know... So you are uh, that, no, no, I'm not excusing. Allow him, so, uh, let, we, we Sometimes the processes, we know... Uh, national so security went there, mm. okay. And two, uh, I agree with what lawyer said about the need to read the, his right and code, but they showed him the, the warrant. I thought mm. he should have demanded it mm -hmm. that, okay, you're showing me, let me read it, right? But he it's wrong, we are in COVID time, so mm. it was right for him to say, Don't touch me, right. but to say, Don't touch me and stand up is like going away. It's not proper. Mm. It's not proper. You get it. And so it's like you are attempting to resist arrest. Okay? Mm. And if you do that, uh, I, I, Johnny, let me be honest with you. I grew up in the bars. Okay. And I've seen a lot of ways that people are arrested. Mm. And when I saw what's happened there... Uh, it's normal. <laughs> it's even... More charitable, uh -huh. I'm telling you. Okay, <laughs> you get it. It's so, uh, no, no, no. When we no, come no, to no, power, no, I will no, send no, speedy no, men to you. Me. Don't worry. Don't oh, worry. And they will pick why are you threatening? Why are you threatening? When, when, see, when okay. are you coming back to power? When? 2021. Okay. Yeah, okay. Your 2021. Thank you. Thank you. We will send policemen. We will send security men to pick you up in a Rambo style, and you will see how it is. You are going to repeat the same things you are complaining about. About what? Because he has not felt it. For the last one. Because he has not felt it, he's not feeling for the arrest. Okay. Johnny, the last we, we have close. We have close. George AEC is the national PRO of the National Disaster Management Organization. Lawyer Abraham Amalba is a, a leader of the NDC's legal team. He is going to court this morning to defend their case.